Protect your privacy online with the best VPN for gaming, ExpressVPN. And visit expressvpn.com slash gillymaster linked in the description to find out how you can get three months free. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to play a version of GT Online that wasn't plagued with issues upon issues upon issues that directly contribute to a dissatisfaction in the player experience? From bugs to glitches to design choices that miss the mark or are outdated by today's standards? Because this game is filled with many of those things that fit into each of those categories. You see, sometimes in a live service game, overhauls are needed in order to keep up with player standards and to better adjust the game for newer content. As GTA players, we aren't the same level anymore as we were when GTA Online first released. And as such, the newer content is designed completely different than older content, which leaves a massive disconnect where the older content has strange limitations toward it that the new content doesn't have, which makes that old content completely undesirable. Rockstar's strategy with GTA Online has kind of just been focus on one update, and then when that update comes out, completely forget about it and focus on the next one. Well, you do that for 8 years and you end up with the current state of the game. Hundreds of vehicles, but only a few being used. Hundreds of missions, but only a few being played. Dozens of heists, but only one being farmed for money. Sure, there will always be the best way to do something or the most efficient strategy, but not to the extent that we have now. If you really want to make money, just grind Kai Prico. If you want to kill someone with very minimal effort, just grab a Mark II Oppressor and skip everything else in between. That's really all there is to it. And these kinds of updates aren't uncommon among other online live service games either. To give a few examples with games that I've played, most recently, For Honor. For Honor came out in 2017, and at its release, it was kind of a mess with no dedicated servers, which meant they had to rely on peer-to-peer -peer connections for a fighting game, and you can only imagine how that turned out. It was also wildly unbalanced at the time, but because everyone was new to the game, it didn't matter as much, the flaws weren't as noticeable. In 2018, the game received proper dedicated server support, and more recently in 2020, the game's combat was overhauled completely to influence offensive play over defensive play, which was due to players becoming better at the game overall over the years of playing it. And along with that, individual characters have seen many different rebalances and reworks to keep the game as fun to play as possible, because as time went on, players got better and more knowledgeable, and the game needed to compensate for that. Another game that I put a lot of time into, Tom Clancy's The Division, the first one. It's kind of the same deal here, at launch the game was kind of unbalanced. Once you reached the end game, the skills were extremely strong, the PvP was all over the place with smart cover practically making you unkillable if you knew what you were doing, infinite healing, annoying metas, and NPCs would completely annihilate you. And it made for a very unpleasant time. However, in the 1.4 update, they overhauled the entire game, making just about every aspect of it more enjoyable for the player. The NPC tankiness and damage was lowered drastically. All the skills, weapons, gear sets, weapon mods, etc. were completely reworked, and by the end of it, it felt like a brand new game, and it was so refreshing to play at that time. Rainbow Six Siege, although I never really got into it, had an entire update dedicated to fixing core issues and complaints that the players had called Operation Health. From upgrades to servers, to enhance the experience, to a whole list of bugs and glitches that were listed by the developers themselves to fix. And for my final example, Call of Duty World War II. Halfway through that game's lifecycle, they overhauled the division system and made some other changes like gave unlimited sprint to name one. And it was after those changes that players started enjoying the game more. It was really the saving grace of Call of Duty World War II. Now what do each of these examples that I have listed have in common? Each game became objectively better and more enjoyable for the players after said update. Going back to GT Online, which has been around longer than any of those games I just mentioned, mind you, has not even seen a glimpse of an update like this. We're lucky to get like one or two quality of life changes here and there every six months when an update does drop, none of which ever tackle the common core problems the game has. I ran a poll through my community tab a few weeks ago simply asking, would you mind if instead of getting a content update for GT Online, they just went back and fixed all the old content and issues and one big quality of life update? Out of 23,000 votes, 87% of people agreed and said they would like to see a quality of life update rather than just a content update. An overwhelming majority of the voters in this poll. I doubt that Rockstar and Take-Two would ever greenlight a project like this because they need that almighty dollar, but honestly, I think something like this could do more for the game's future than any old update would, both monetarily and for the player base themselves. Imagine if older vehicles could compete with the same five vehicles that people use in races today. Network security could use a big upgrade. Imagine if they provided basic IP masking for their players so that you can play without a VPN without worrying about the next person hitting you offline. I saw a video from some ordinary gamers about this a few days ago, I'll leave a link to it in the description, it's definitely worth a watch. And I just find it very sad how Among Us, made by an indie studio, and Phasmophobia, which was literally developed by a single person, has better security for their players than one of the biggest games on the market, made by the biggest AAA studio. Moving on though, across the board weaponized vehicle bouncing is much needed. Bug fixes from the multiple god mode methods, the yellow circle bugs, infinite loading issues, and a ton more. 
Would this be a lot of work? Of course it would, but it's only that way in the first place because of the neglect from Rockstar to do any of this stuff in the eight years the game's been going on. To me, Expanded and Enhanced is the perfect time to roll something out like this, but after seeing the trailers, I don't really have any confidence that anything will be different in that too. And then to see the paragraph like this on their newswire stating that they are looking at ways to improve the detail and experience for new and returning players, do they seriously not see the glaring issues with the game right now? I find that very hard to believe. If Expanded and Enhanced comes out and literally nothing is different, then I don't know man, all hope's pretty much lost at that point if they do state that they're looking at ways and they don't change some of this shit. I don't know how many comments I've seen of people saying that they stopped playing GT Online because of annoying shit that goes on in this game. If anything, an update like this would bring tons of players back into the game that left already, not to mention the amount of shark cards they could sell from multiple things added in the game over the 8 years being actually good for once instead of the same 5 vehicles. I'm sure there's going to be people in the comments who defend Rockstar and take 2 on this and say, oh that's just, that's just way too much work for them, Rockstar could never do that, they won't make any money from it. And to that I just say bullshit man. All these other companies that have reworked their games have much less money and much smaller dev teams than Rockstar, who is literally the biggest game studio out there. They would definitely be able to pull something like this off. There's no reason they won't be able to. Anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. Will Expanded and Enhanced be the saving grace that we're all waiting for? I highly doubt it, but this game seriously needs a quality of life update. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, as well as subscribe to my channel for more guide and PvP related content. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.